Coming up, a young boy lies paralyzed after a trampoline accident. And you can feel me touching your hands. A little bit numb, does it? Whereabouts? You show me. A fall leaves a woman with multiple fractures. Did you feel a crack or? Yeah, I yeah. did it slip. Okay. And a child is in a critical condition after a long haul flight. Would this be an appropriate response for him when he's unwell? It would, it would be for him, yeah. It's okay. In code one. In mission one, the emergency response team are en route to a young boy showing signs of paralysis. We're right where my thumb is, final parole school. Thank you. Homestead Road. 11 year old Ethan has sustained an injury to his neck and spine after a backflip on a trampoline went wrong. Ambulance have called for immediate air assistance. 20 minutes flying time north of Auckland at Whangaparoa. The team will need to land at a nearby school for now, as Ethan is currently en route to this location. Have okay, clear underneath. My child will clear. Got an ambulance officer on the nose. Yeah. Okay, the collective is now down the lot to clear up. Paramedic Russell Clark and Dr. Brett Gerard find the first responding ambulance officer to get an update on the patient. Oh, yeah. We've got an 11 year old male who's been jumping on a trampoline, has landed at an angle that's twisted his neck. Yep. His mum's seen him start frothing at the mouth, stop breathing, um, unconscious for quite a, quite a large uh, period of time. Okay. He's got some neuro deficits in, his, in both legs and pain to his neck. He's just been loaded now, yep. so they'll bring him back oh. here for you. The ambulance arrives with a very worried mother and 11-year-old Ethan. Hi. G'day. Hello. This is young Ethan. Ethan was on the trampoline, went to do a backward flip and he landed pretty much on his head and shoulders and okay. legs kind of flipped up and over. Okay. Mom says he started to gurgle, query KO'd with the eyes rolled in the back of the head. A bit of pain at the base of the neck and right to around about T4. A little bit of numbness in both legs. No other uh, trauma that I've found. Chest is clear, abdomen's clear. Allergies to penicillin. I got it all kind of written down on my glove here. Sure. Allergies to penicillin, and uh, he does not take any medications. So, okay. Okay. While Brad assesses the extent of Ethan's spinal injury, outside, Russell Clark finds his very concerned mother, Nicola. Hey, Mum. Hi, Russell. Hi, Nicola. Well, you, did you see what happened today? No, I didn't. Okay. I've just been right. working. We were cleaning a house. Now, yep. he's just been learning how to do backwards flips. Okay. Now, what this said is he's jumped up and landed straight on his head, and his feet just collapsed down and he beat his neck. So, okay. All right. So... He wasn't breathing. He was kind of gurgling, rolling his eyes back when I got on the train. Yeah, I didn't right. move him. Okay. Cool. Do you want to come with us? Yeah, I'm not going to leave. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's right. It's no surprise that she is very concerned about her son. My name's Brett, I'm one of the doctors. We'll just have a quick wee look at you. So is your neck still sore now? Yeah. It is. No pain in your tummy at all? I didn't see it happen, but the chest... Around your chest is a bit sore. Okay, okay. All right. In mission two, the Fitianga-based Hilo is responding to a woman in need of immediate extrication. Suzette Teach has slipped on a walking track, fracturing multiple bones in her left leg. She's unable to be moved manually by ground crew who have since called in for support. She's still believed to be on the walking track at the popular East Coast beach of Cathedral Cove. Due to the close proximity of the Fitianga based Hilo, they arrive within five minutes of the call out. Shuttles are forward to fly, RPM's good, talks are matched. Landing checklist completed. Roger. Control West Pack 1, landing. Copy, thank you, West Pack 1. Clear door. Thank you. I'll just go over and see what they need. Yep. While paramedic Marcel heads over to find the patient, crewman Ati Winyard and pilot John Jones keep the chopper running due to the high risk location. Medic. Yeah, go ahead. 
there. Quarter of the way down the stairs, coming down. Roger, mate. We'll stay running. We'll see you down here. Roger. Hello there, ma'am. <laughs> Where are you from? <laughs> are you living in New Zealand or are you on holiday? <laughs> okay. Yep. This is a good spot to rest on. Yeah. And what happened this morning? No, I just slipped back. Slipped? Yeah. It's got significant deformity on the right inside. Yeah. yeah. And cool. no, I just Did you feel a crack or? Yeah, I yeah. had it slipped. Okay. Have you got anyone with you? Yes, my daughter and my son. Okay. And where are they staying at the moment? Oh, yes. oh great. Well, we'll look at taking you to uh, North Shore Hospital. How's that? Are you there again from uh, Medic? Here you go. Here us um, probably going to North Shore Hospital there in um, South African National, staying up that way. Thanks. Cool. All right, we'll just do this nice and controlled. So you guys are going to be acting as a break as well by pulling back. And if, if worst comes to worst, you come back and sit down holding on, because otherwise they'll yeah, go yeah. for a skate right down, yeah? So this lady slipped over, walking down the track. It's quite slippery, as you can see. The Ambos have got there with a um, green combi carrier stretcher, which is great. And um, been a nice team considered effort. They're getting it down. Uh, once we're down, we'll get her on the stretcher, put an IV and give her some pain relief. Um, South African National, staying at North Shore, so we'll, that's the perfect place we'll try and take her to North Shore Hospital. In the small community of Whangaparoa, Dr. Brett Gerard and intensive care paramedic Russell Clark are determining the extent of 11-year-old Ethan's injury after he attempted a backflip on a trampoline, landing heavily on his head. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have a quick wee look at your arms and legs. Can you squeeze my fingers now as tight as you can? Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Squeeze really tight. And you can feel me touching your hands. It all feels okay. A little bit numb, does it? Just in your, in your arm there, does it? Whereabouts? You show me. Just all the whole arm, is it? A little bit numb. Was it like that before? Or was it just gone like that? Hard to tell, isn't it? Okay, no, that's fine. We'll just have a wee look at your legs. Can you feel me touching your legs? Do they feel funny or tingly? Your toes feel tingly. After a thorough assessment, Dr. Brett Gerard can conclude that Ethan has definite signs of a spinal injury. He must now find Ethan's mum to get any further details around the mechanism of his fall. Hi, I'm Brett, one of the doctors. Um, so you were with him Ethan. when it happened? Yeah. No, well, I was in the house doing housework cleaning. Yep. My job. Yeah. Yeah. And okay. I heard this, Nicola, Nicola, and he was flat on the track, gurgling, eyes rolling back. I jumped on, got everybody else off the track. Okay. And just kept them same position. So how long would that have lasted for, do you think, that, that sort of uh, eyes rolled back, oh, gurgling? Three or four minutes. And so, then Renata yeah. just said, oh, do you think we need an ambulance? I was like, yeah. 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 So what? So when he kind of came to, what was he doing then or what was he complaining of? Just his, his neck and he couldn't breathe. He said it was all sharp. Okay. So, yeah. But he was breathing, you could sort of see he was breathing and he was talking to, to you. Okay. Not okay. really talking, just kind of struggling to breathe. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, obviously, you know, a little bit worried about his neck at the stage. Yeah. And we'll, so we'll just be very cautious with that. But... Yeah, we'll just do it. I'm like come here, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Paramedic Marcel is preparing Suzette for transport to hospital after she fell heavily on a walking track, fracturing multiple bones in her right ankle. Perfect. Lovely. Suzette, we're going to look after you and take you through to North Shore Hospital. What I'd like to do is pop a little IV in your arm. Okay, and that way we can give you some morphine or something a bit stronger or something for the sickness. Suzette's son witnessed the accident. She was actually beside me and she grabbed hold of me and she stole and she just fell. We hurt the ankle, it turned around and it broke. Yeah, 100 metres from the beach. We can have three paracetamol and three, three ibuprofen. I'll give us some um, on Dantatron as well, just in case you get sick. It's a tense time for the entire team, as the tide creeps closer towards the chopper. Just relax your arm down if you can, Suzette, and I'll um, just try and pop a little IV in there. Is he all right running for eight or nine minutes? Yeah, looks like the tide is coming in, so we need to limit our time on the beach just to get our patient. We're going to take it through to the north shore. So we've probably got about five or six minutes to load her up and then take off. Just a sharp scratch for a sec. There we go. That's all done. With the IV lure in, Marcel can now give Suzette much-needed medication before transport. 
We've just given us some um, on Danzatron, which is an anti-nausea, anti-sickness. Sometimes the morphine can make you feel sick, but more importantly, the flight uh, through the North Shore. Um, especially when you've got a broken bone, you can feel a bit yucky and uncomfortable. So she's got that in place and a whole bunch of oral um, pain relief, paracetamol, ibuprofen, tramadol, etc. And that, by the time we get to North Shore, should be kicking in because she's got quite a nasty ankle fracture potentially and, um, and that'll really help. In Mission 3, the emergency rescue team are heading to a young boy needing immediate hospital care. 11-year-old Archie is suffering from severe dehydration and weight loss after a flight home from Singapore with his family. His condition is serious and Archie will need multiple tests to determine the cause. He's with ambulance ground crews located at Pawanui, 30 minutes flying time east of Auckland. We're uh, being tasked down to Pawanui, a bit of a tailwind and um, a bit of turbulence we can expect uh, coming over the range. Well, as far as the job goes, um, not a lot of detail, we'll just land at the um, Pawanui airstrip. The team are in their final approach to Pawanui. I'm going straight to ground. You are clear out. OK, thank you. I've For sure. Paramedic Russell and Dr Inia head directly over to meet the ambulance. Hi there. Hi. My name's Russell. What's your name? Hi, uh, Louise. Hi, Louise. Little Archie here from, yeah. from uh, Singapore on Saturday. Hi. Got sick in the ear. Uh, massive vomiting yeah. ever since. He hasn't been eating or drinking for the remainder of the uh, weekend. He's brought into the uh, surgery this morning, just over the road here, totally flat. Um, initially, Jess said that it was sitting around about seven. Okay, really quite flat. The doctor wasn't actually able to find the uh, line because she get the uh, fluids in. Um, got an entryosis in now, running uh, saline through, but um, relatively slow. He's actually had on Densitron, 4 milligrams um, IV. Heart rate is actually quite tachycardic at about 120, still tachycardic. Archie could be suffering a multitude of conditions, so the best way to treat Archie at this stage is to give him fluids and transport him rapidly to hospital. Hey Archie, how are you feeling, mate? You know, you gonna come for a ride in our chopper and that? No, that's okay. That's gonna be good. Amazing. Yeah, yeah it'd be good, eh? Just take your temperature, okay? So you've done to Waikato? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Hey. Thirty-six point seven. Thirty-six point seven. Yeah. Thirty-six point seven. Thirty-six point seven. So he's had diarrhea and vomiting? No, no. No, no diarrhea, just vomiting. Just vomiting. Vomiting. Have you had been having a sore tummy at all? Yeah, so he's got a bit of a fever at the moment now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is your how old is he now? Six. Thirty-seven, seven. This young boy, he's presented to the local doctors in the ambulance really, really sick. He had a very low level of consciousness. And as you can see, he looks very, very, very gaunt, skinny. The mum says um, he's lost a lot of weight. So what they've done is they've done an interosseous, which is a, a bone injection gun, which is um, a great, great option if you can't get access. And they managed to start giving him some IV fluids or interosseous fluids. And so what we're going to do is just monitor him, take him through to Waikato, and um, where they'll need to do some further testing. Suzette Teach has just received IV medications in preparation for her transport to North Shore Hospital after she suffered multiple fractures to her right ankle while hiking to Cathedral Cove. She slipped, heard the crack. The ambos were saying it was quite swollen and deformed on the inner side of the ankle. You've got the tibia and the fibula coming down onto the um, ankle bone and uh, she may need a wee operation to get things sorted depending on how badly it is uh, broken. Right, we're all set. With the help of the public, she is finally on the move. Accompanied by her daughter in law. So you're just going to wait here by these girls? Yep. Thanks very much. Magic. It's awesome, guys. Well done. With both Suzette and her daughter in law loaded, they take off for North Shore Hospital. is because she's visiting her family who live on North Shore from uh, South Africa. Um, and so that's the most appropriate hospital to take someone with a um, simple uh, isolated injury like this. Right. It's really great. Yeah, North Shore, Westpac Rescue 1, our copy. Loud and clear. 
Uh, bringing you a lady from the Coromandel who's slipped on a walking track. She's uh, got a closed uh, fracture of her right ankle. Our ETA on the pad is uh, eight or nine minutes. Give the window. Roger, thank you. Clearing the fences. Bales now clear of the fence. Back turning battle. There is if it's required. Suzette has made it to North Shore Hospital, where scans will reveal the full extent of her fractures. At Pawanui, intensive care paramedic Russell and Dr Inia are dealing with a complex condition that's affecting 11-year-old Archie. Would this be an appropriate response for him when he's unwell? Yeah. <laughs> it, would, it would be for him, yeah. That's OK. He's been unable to eat or drink for two days since returning to New Zealand from Singapore. All done. All done. Finished. Oh, there you go. Archie is not well and needs immediate hospital care. Just come, you know, flying in from overseas. He hasn't managed to take any sort of food or fluids for about 48 hours, so he's really quite dehydrated. Um, you know, for his age, his heart rate's quite fast, which is usually the first thing to go, and he looks quite sick too. So no, we're just giving him his first fluid bolus now. He'll obviously get some more, but he's reasonably sick, eh? He needs to go down to Waikato Hospital. All right, just gonna bring you out slowly. Right, lowering you down. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lift you over. We're gonna give you some earmuffs as well, okay? Special helicopter ones, so you can be a pilot now. Whoa. Nice, good boy. Good stuff. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Archie and his mother Louise head to the awaiting chopper, where it will take 20 minutes to reach Waikato Hospital. The crew will need to keep a close eye on Archie to make sure his condition remains stable throughout the flight. Eleven-year-old Ethan has been prepared for transport to hospital. He was showing signs of a spinal injury after landing heavily on his head while bouncing on a trampoline. And down to three. Intensive care paramedic Russell and Dr. Brett Gerard need to treat him for the worst case scenario. Same again, just want you to stay really still, okay? We're just gonna pull this. You'll feel a board going out from underneath you, mate. It's a little bit of a strange I'll just, feeling. Yeah, I'll just hold his just hold his head while we're doing that. Yep. Here we go. That's the boy Ethan, good stuff. And the other side. There we go. Well done, buddy. Man. Awesome. The crew's main priority now is to prevent any further damage to an already potentially injured yep. spine. All right, Ethan, what we're going to do is going to put a couple of towels next to your head and then and some tape across it just to keep your head still while we're in the helicopter, OK? So you won't be able to turn your head at all. All right. Are you feeling sick at all? A little bit? OK. You've got a, a little wafer? wafer? Yeah. Probably about 30 kilos, so four milligrams should be fine. Yeah. At the moment, we're just preparing him for flight, so we're going to give him um, uh, some medicine to stop him feeling sick, and then we're going to fly him to Starship, where he's going to get some X-rays of his back. We're going to open now. It's going to taste quite yucky, but it should stop you feeling sick. All right. Ethan is only moments away from being transported to the emergency department at hospital. Just a couple of bumps as we come in, Ethan where a team of spinal specialists are awaiting his arrival. How are you feeling, all right? Yeah, is your neck still sore? Eight months later, Ethan is back in his hometown in Whangaparoa, where he remembers that terrible day with his mother, Nicola. That morning we were going to my mum's work. She was doing cleaning at this house and there was a tramp there so I decided to start bouncing on it because I learned how to do a backflip so I ended up getting double bounced by a backflip and I can't remember what didn't can't remember what happened then. That's when his mother heard that terrible sound. All of a sudden there was a bit of screaming and so we looked out and we knew there was something wrong. Ethan was line on the tramp so it was a matter of yeah his eyes were rolling and one 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 <laughs> mm. 
fire crews, ambulance and Westpac were deployed to the scene, where Ethan was quickly stabilised and taken to hospital. He was admitted for two days where he had multiple scans to determine the extent of his injuries. He was later released but returned after his mother Nicola was faced with a new problem. Ethan started having seizures so we had to rush him to hospital and he had to go through one hospital to another, transfer from North Shore to Waitakere and go through CAT scans, blood tests. <laughs> but luckily enough we haven't had any of that for a long time have we? Nah. But I'm scared to do a backflip on the tramp now. Yes. Good, eh? <laughs> and while the trampoline is now off the to-do list, Ethan still has big dreams for his future, and he knows that without help, reaching those goals could have been a lot different. If I had broken my neck, I would never have been able to, I don't know, achieve my goal of being a professional rugby player. Yeah, because I love playing rugby and it's my main sport. Rugby gear, water bottle, mouth guards. And Ethan's already begun his journey of reaching his lifelong dream. I've got into my rep team for Silverdale. I've been playing a normal team for Silverdale. Socks in the front. Yep, uh, sevens tournament today. I'm just under 45 Auckland champs. Yeah. Wait and he thanks all the emergency staff for his chance to continue. Thank you for saving my sports and my rugby. I wouldn't be able to do anything right now if I had a broken my neck. So, yeah, thank you very much. Suzette was admitted into surgery to repair her broken bones. She has since returned to South Africa, recovered from her injuries. Archie got to hospital where he spent three days undergoing medication to help with his condition. He has since made a full recovery. Ethan's mother also thanks the crew that helped her son that terrible day. Well, I think that it was the best option and it could possibly have saved him from any further damage. But where would we be without them? <laughs> really?